is a public service announcement brought to you by the Home Office and our trusted hospitality industry partners, JD Weatherspoon and Diageo. Just say no. Listen up, kids. This is the voice of experience. I knew these guys back in the day that gas supplied by the mum of a mate and let me say she was no pleased when she came in to discover a living wall we decorated the warm arterial spray. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Back to the start. We parked ourselves my mate's mum's place one day. My mate's mate produces a wee bag of the green stuff. Now, John and Craig, they seem dead keen, but <laughs> no me. Because I'd seen that scene on screen about how your brain on drugs becomes pure edible and egg-like and... I don't need that stress in my life, so there's no change in what I said when they dragged me to jail. I swear I did not inhale. But despite keeping my lungs well clear, I was still sensing an intense miasma in the atmosphere, so I had to tear my eyes away from my 16th view in a Cape Fear, and I see Big John. You're next, he drones. Holding out the smoke, expecting me to take a toke while I'm trying to understand bloodstained hands, chest, arms and throat. He's covered, man. He's pure caked in this red, sticky mess. I must have been so intensely focused on Robert De Niro's quest for revenge that I somehow missed Big John getting covered in red. Is that blood, mate? <laughs> Aye, I uh, got a bit munchy, so I ate Craig. <laughs> <laughs> now I ask you, how do you verbally chew through an actual cannibal high on tetrahydrocannibals? I mean, I suppose it depends how intensely they intend to assess the cravings caused by a low glycemic index state, but let me put it this way. If you think you can trust an actual cannibal to keep their cravings at bay and abstain from analyzing specific lices of your face, then good luck to you, mate, but I don't take chances. Good thing I didn't smoke that day. Clear-headed, with an unblemished consciousness, I did what George A. Romero wanted of us. I went for the brain. Big John toppled and spun with the red stuff just pumping out of him. And weirdly, I thought about all that blood on the kitchen floor of Robert Redford's houseboat. And in fact, looking at John, I wondered if maybe they'd underplayed it a bit. But no real time to dwell on it, because in comes Craig's mum. <laughs> well... As you can imagine, the local constabulary were quickly dispatched and made short work in nabbing me. I told them yeah. everything. I told them about the cannabis and the cannibalism and Juliette Lewis's nomination for the best supporting actress in it. They said it was obvious that drugs were the cause of this violent cannibal uprise and the end of mass survival, but Big John's brains bashed in and Craig's chest gaped open, exposing his lungs. Another case of devil's crop, morally corrupting the young. The minister's responsibility is successfully plead. The only charge me is a simple accessory to cannibalistic gluttony. With this PSA mandated as part of my party leniency, my sentence commuted be speaking to you about public decency and the dangers of THC, because I know you think it's harmless, but I can tell you from experience, it's not. <laughs> Cannabis is a gateway drug that inevitably ends in cannibalism. <laughs> Don't be a dope, just say no. <laughs>